bunch of people with whom I was very closely associated in, trop in Central American tropics. They started writing about deforestation, how this is a worldwide phenomena and how it's a global in scope. And I became more and more interested in, 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 the, in the issue. And then it turns out that deforestation is a very complex problem. Its economic factors are involved, social factors are involved, institutional factors are involved. So I felt that if I were to continue working on issues of deforestation or issues of conservation of biological diversity, I should, I should work in India. You know, that sort of strengthened my determination to do more work in India because I could understand cultural and social and economic factors better there than I could understand in Central America. So then I started really actively seeking opportunities to work in India and then those opportunities came in the early 90s because at that time non-profit organizations had started to get established in India. The regime was more liberal, of course not only in economy but also in terms of uh, more friendly in having people uh, from uh, from other parts of the world come and work there. And then I started with a number of projects and then it occurred to me that you know you can work in a project mode but what, what does that mean? It's not sustainable. So you have to either be a part of an institution there and, uh, and I wanted to be a part of certain institutions but then I also felt that there was no institution that could deal with the type of problems we were facing, at least not in my mind, you know, not in terms of, you know, what the vision I had as to what the institution should do. So I talked with the colleagues of mine and uh, then we started this organization, Ashoka Trust for Research in Ecology and the Environment, ATRI. And, uh, and we wanted to be an institution that has a primary focus on biodiversity all types of life uh, because India had institutions which could deal with forestry, they could deal with trees, they could deal with wildlife but in an isolated way. But all those are part of biodiversity, all life. And secondly, uh, I thought we needed an institution you know, which could integrate these ecological approaches, social ap approaches, economic approaches and so on and so forth. Thirdly, I felt uh, we needed a type of institution, you know, that was not working as an ivory tower, doing just basic research, but could also reach to the policy makers. And fourthly, I felt we needed an institution, you know, which could combine research with action, action on the ground, working with local communities that are uh, beneficiaries of uh, biodiversity on one hand, and if uh, that use of biodiversity is not well managed and if they are not a party to that use could lead to problems down the road. And so it was, you know, that type of thinking that led to the creation of ATRI. And I think uh, we have done very well uh, because we immediately came to be recognized as a very serious institution which primarily gathers knowledge, generates knowledge, and it's on the basis of that knowledge it takes uh, number of action, it goes to the policy makers, it works with the local communities, fulfill its mission in a, in, a, in a very, very different manner. And you know, the way ATRI works is it develops our uh, five-year strategic plans. We have just completed our five-year strategic plan, which is going to place uh, emphasis in, in certain areas. I think our emphasis is going to be more in terms of uh, more rigorous research, expanding our programs, particularly in the eastern region, getting more engaged in, in, the, in the policy work, and so those, that, those are you know, some of the things I would say.